Good morning and welcome to Advent Health News Briefing. I'm Tom Johnson from Advent Health TV. This morning we are talking about COVID-19 and its Omicron variant, which spreads faster than earlier variants. Today, a discussion of what you need to know and the best ways for you and your loved ones to stay safe during the holidays. Our guest today is Dr. Victor Herrera, Chief Medical Officer at Advent Health Orlando and an infectious disease specialist. As always, we would love to answer your questions. You can ask them in the comments section here on Facebook or you can text us at 407-490-3075. Again, that's 407-490-3075. And now is the time to send in your questions. A reminder for the media, if you have questions on topics other than what we are talking about this morning, we are happy to help you with that. But please send those questions to the Advent Health External Communications team. The COVID-19 positivity rate, Dr. Herrera, at Advent Health Centra Care, urgent care clinics across Florida tripled in the last few weeks from 5.5% to 21%. What should our community take from that? Well, let me start by, by talking a little bit about what that number means, because that number has become uh, very useful to us to track the pandemic. Uh, so when we talk about the, the positivity rate, this means uh, patients presenting to our urgent care centers, and then out of 100, how many are positive? And after the last search, when that, uh, when that number came down around to around 5%, and it had to stay around that level, and as you just said, we've seen a rapid increase. Um, we've had actually never seen the, that number increase in the manner that it has increased in the last couple of weeks. And that tells us two things. Uh, first, um, it tells us that we have a high uh, community transmission. Um, the, the virus is going around, it's infecting a lot of people. Uh, the second thing that it tells us is that we learned in the last two searches that that number has predictive value when it comes to what are we going to see in the hospital in terms of patients being hospitalized. So right now, we'll, we'll talk about that. Our, our census is, is low for COVID-19 patients, but typically that positivity rate, when it increases, it correlates with more or less a two-week lag of starting to see an increase in hospitalizations. Yeah, let's continue talking about that. Right now, as you mentioned, our census is low, about 100 people hospitalized with COVID-19 at Advent Health Central Florida Hospitals. This is across uh, our Central Florida division all of our hospitals, that is down from 1,700 at the height of the Delta surge in August. So how do you expect Omicron to impact that number? Is there a way of knowing how rapidly that might change, if at all? So um, obviously, a big difference from when we were at the peak of the last surge and where we are now. Uh, the concern is looking at that positivi positivity rate going up like that and what that could potentially mean from a few weeks from now. Every search is different. We are hoping that maybe this is the search where most of those cases stay out in the community and we don't really see a significant increase in our hospitalizations, um, but we need to be ready for that possibility uh, because again, that number will suggest that maybe at the beginning of January, we will start seeing an increase in the hospitalizations as well. And but we don't know for sure. We have the benefit of all the experience we've gathered during the pandemic. So how is the hospital preparing for another potential surge? And, and how can the community do its part to help? Thank you, Tom. I think that's a very important question. So in the hospital right now, even though our numbers are low, we've learned that it's good to be proactive. And actually today, we are activating our COVID-19 command center. Um, and what that means is that leaders from different areas get together, we evaluate the current situation, we think about possible scenarios uh, in the next few weeks, and we, are, we make sure that we are ready. We ask the question, is there something that we can be doing differently in case that we end up in a situation where we have an increase in hospitalizations that start to overwhelm the system. So we literally hope for the best, but we prepare for the worst. We learn that it's good to be proactive. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna emphasize this because I don't want people to think that us opening a command center means that the situation is dire. This is simply to reiterate, looking ahead to make sure we're prepared, correct? That is correct. We cannot predict the future 
but we go through the exercise of thinking what are possible scenarios and when we think about those, those big dimensions that we track of a staff, supplies, a space, we want to make sure we are ready. So how does our healthcare system sequence COVID-19 samples for new variants? And, and have we found the Omicron variant among any Advent Health patients? We, every week we send samples to be sequenced. Um, so far in our hospitalized patients, we have not identified this variant, but we know through um, first the way the cases are presenting, uh, I strongly suggest that the, vari the variant is obviously circulating in our community already, and also we know that it had been identified in the, in the water, um, uh, so in wastewater. Um, so I think it's here, but because of the way that we sequence in hospitalized patients and the number of samples that, that uh, we send every week, I think that that's why we haven't seen it yet on hospitalized patients, but we think that it's a matter of time until that happens. Yeah, there's so much attention on Omicron right now. So far, studies and real-world evidence appear to show the Omicron variant does spread faster than previous strains like Delta. So what are the best steps people can take to avoid an infection and just as importantly to avoid spreading it to others? That's an excellent question because uh, the data that we are seeing um, does suggest that it's a very infectious uh, variant. Um, so all those preca precautions that we know works, like getting vaccinated, like uh, using masks, when we feel we're in a situation where high risk of getting exposed to somebody that, that may be positive, um, hand hygiene, uh, those things more than now are important um, to try to control the spread of this very infectious variant. I also wanna touch on the other thing that we are hearing about the cases being mild. Um, so very infectious, but the cases are, being, are, are mild. And, and I think every, I want everybody to think that even if that's the case, if you then, because it's so infectious, infect a lot of people, you may then get to those that are vulnerable and at a high risk of being hospitalized and end up with the same number of patients that we have admitted in other surges. You've mentioned several times how we look forward trying to figure out what might happen. We also look back sometimes, and our colleagues at Centricare recently reviewed records uh, for a sampling of patients who tested positive for COVID-19 last week, only about 4% of those patients were vaccinated and had a third dose or a booster. Does that help underscore the importance of a third dose right now? Yes, so we have learned so far how important boosters are uh, to prevent the spread of this um, new variant. And I know that we, want, we all want answers, but if we think about what has happened, uh, this is very recent when we learn about this new variant. And these are studies that traditionally will take months to really get this information. And, and we've been able to get some information, I think, very fast. So it's clear that the boosters help. Um, it's clear that somebody that doesn't have a booster, even if they have their first dose and their second dose, are at higher risk of being infected by Omicron. And then it's also clear that somebody who is unvaccinated um, is also at increased risk. So we used to talk uh, about the last surge being a surge of the unvaccinated. This may be a surge of the unvaccinated at the unboosted. So what we really wanna emphasize is that if you already had your first dose, your second dose, a lot of people are thinking, well, I already have very good protection. Well, the third dose we've learned is not just a plus, it's not a bonus. You really need that third dose as well. And the current definition of the CDC for fully vaccinated is just the first one and the second one. But we suspect that very soon we're gonna see a review of that definition to really include that, that uh, uh, third booster. You know, I, I think this is a good opportunity to, to inform the community, but one thing that I, that I want people to get out of this today I think the most important message is that this is the time to get your booster if you don't have it. That's a call to action. That's something that can really bend the curve that we could potentially see here in our community if everybody who is eligible for a booster go and gets it. We have our first question for you from the media. 
Uh, this is from Nadine with News 6, kind of going back to some of the things we already covered, but we're talking about again. Has Advent Health seen a confirmed case of the Omicron variant, and can we assume the current spike is because of the Omicron variant? You know, the way that we are seeing that positivity rate change, the way that we are seeing it um, a spread in the community, tell us that this is Omicron. Um, we, as I said earlier, because of the way that we sequence mainly in hospitalized patients, we haven't had one isolated in the hospital yet, but a lot of those patients going to our urgent care centers, we are convinced that uh, it's really uh, Omicron what we're seeing. So let's go back to uh, the third doses for just a minute. Third doses of the mRNA vaccines, like from Pfizer and Moderna, sometimes called booster shots appear to be very important, as you said, when it comes to fighting Omicron. But what about someone who maybe does not have a first or second dose of the vaccine yet? Will it still help them to begin their primary vaccination series? Yes. So the, when you think about boosters, there is really nothing special about the booster that for some reason the booster is the one that protects about, uh, against Omicron. It really has to do with if you are six months or more after your second dose, that immunity starts to wane down, to decrease. And then that's why the third dose becomes, the booster becomes so important. So if you are not vaccinated yet, and you get your first dose, your second dose, you are gonna have that bumping immunity as well. So absolutely um, getting the boosters or getting vaccinated if you haven't been vaccinated is very important. And I wanna touch on something you asked me uh, earlier about how the community can help. Um, because we do these events not just to inform, but to tell the community how they can help their healthcare systems. And um, one thing that I, that I encourage everybody to think about is that when we consider COVID, then we think about our risk of getting it, and maybe if somebody doesn't have a lot of risk factors, things like, well, if I get it, it's not a big deal, then maybe I don't need the vaccine. And that's thinking just about the impact of COVID on you as an individual. But if you think about hospitals in a community, they are a very important resource. And any of us at any time may need to go to the hospital, not just for COVID, but for anything else. So there is this other aspect related to, to getting the vaccine to safe practice that it, don't, it has to do not just with protecting yourself against COVID, but decreasing the spread in the community so you don't overwhelm a hospital that you may need. Um, so that's an aspect in which, you know, the community can really help us make sure that our systems don't get overwhelmed. And don't forget, uh, the phone number to text your questions for our guest is 407-490-3075. Again, 407-490-3075. Of course, you can also post questions right here on Facebook. And we do have another question for you from the media. Uh, Nikki Ross from the Daytona Beach News Journal asked, how do you think... 2022 will be different than the past two years, both in the hospital setting and just for COVID-19 in general? You know, we, we learned with um, every surge. And, you know, hopefully we don't have to go through, through a surge again, but um, uh, e every time we modify our approach, uh, one thing that we recognized during the last surge is that when you cancel procedures that we consider not urgent, um, you know, we know that not urgent doesn't mean not necessary, uh, but we learned that when you do that and then you, you wait four weeks, that is something that affects uh, everybody. So one way that w things may look different is that we may get better at trying to manage COVID and any variants and any surge and, and then also continue uh, to provide care for all patients and you know, figure out how to do that. Uh, you know, we cannot see the future, but we all believe that we are gonna reach a time where we are not gonna be in this situation with, with COVID. And I think sometimes these variants coming may just reflect the virus evolving to become eventually endemic. So we do see light at the end of the tunnel and I think we all feel that this just doesn't stop, but we just need to get through this. And I, I, we are optimistic for, for 2022 if we continue to do everything that we need to do to control the virus. So what if you already have been infected with COVID-19? Does that give you any protection against Omicron? 
So we know that when you are infected with the virus, you are gonna develop a level of immunity. Um, however, we've seen people that had COVID already that get infected with COVID again and they can get very sick from it. So their recommendation is that even if you had it already, don't feel that then that's enough to be protected against getting it again and get vaccinated. Actually, there are several studies that show that if the combination of having COVID-19, the natural infection, and then getting the vaccine um, gives what we sometimes refer to as super immunity. So I will say that anybody who already had COVID-19 actually have an opportunity of just getting the vaccine and getting some very, very good protection. I have another question from the media for you. Bob Hazen from WESH asks, how close are your ICUs to capacity right now? So this is a, a, a busy time of the year for hospitals, regardless of, of COVID, especially as we go into, into more of our winter. Uh, we are not experiencing right now um, ICUs that are over capacity. Um, but then that's why we are being proactive and monitoring the situation and thinking that if indeed we continue to see an increase in, in, in COVID-19 hospitalizations and potentially ICU hospitalizations, then how do we manage that? Uh, so right now the situation is, is under control. We really hope it stays that way. But like I say, we're, we're, we're preparing and getting ready in case something happens. You mentioned earlier that so far there is some evidence that Omicron cases of the virus seem to be milder than with previous strains. If that's the case, why is it so important to continue keeping the virus from spreading? Also, is it possible still to get severely sick or die from the Omicron variant? Variant. So that's the first. Definitely, you can still get very sick from it. That people can die from it. We are starting to hear now reports of confirmed deaths in, in Omicron, uh, patients infected with the Omicron variant coming from other parts of the United States. Uh, so that's one. Uh, also, if you think about it from a number of hospitalizations perspective, if you cases are milder, but then you have a lot more cases now, some of those cases eventually will get to people that are vulnerable, and you may end up with this exact same number of hospitalizations. So yes, milder, but now you may infect a lot more and your immunocompromised, your elderly may get it as well and may end up in the hospital. I have another question from the media member for you. This comes from Abe Abaraya from WMFE, who asks, with the CDC saying some PCR tests are not able to detect Omicron, are you concerned that the true positivity rate is actually higher? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Um, and that refers to the fact that the virus, as we know, the, the S protein is mutating and some PCR tests target that protein. So the concern is, well, if the protein mutates, you may be missing it and a negative test is not a true negative. So I can tell you that at Advent Health, as soon as we heard about this variant, we made sure that our labs detect the current variant, Omicron variant. So I'm confident that in our system, the PCRs that we use are detecting um, true cases of COVID-19. Um, I cannot speak for other systems, but I, I believe that it's important that every system does that exercise of making sure that the test check for, for the virus, because you are correct that some tests may miss it, but not at Advent Health, we already um, covered that. So this time of year, there could be multiple culprits behind a cough, fever, other symptoms. The flu is also out there along with garden variety cold viruses. So when should someone get tested for COVID-19? Should everyone with any kind of symptom be tested? Yeah, so we, we've seen an evolution uh, with this variant also in some of the symptoms to be similar to what you will consider the common cold. I think that right now, anybody experiencing those symptoms, I will encourage them to discuss that with their physicians, especially if there has been a history of, um, of being exposed. Uh, the the uh, transmission in the community is very high. So I will consider that anybody experiencing cold-like symptoms right now with what is happening in our community shall discuss with their doctor getting tested because there is a relatively high probability that maybe they are infected with the Omicron variant. 
Christmas Eve, now just a few days away, uh, one week later, New Year's Eve. What's the message right now about travel? Should people travel for the holidays? And what about parties? And what do you need to think about as far as your friends and family being vaccinated? Well, Tom, we have said this before. I think the key is to think that we are not asking people to stop living their lives, but we need to learn how to live with COVID-19, at least until we get through all of this. And what that means is that we know that there are things that work. Um, so use uh, your judgment, you know, if there is somebody that has symptoms or somebody that is sick, protect yourself. We know that there are settings where a mask um, is useful if you are in an environment where you could potentially get exposed. Uh, we know that outdoor activities versus indoor activities are, are, are preferable. So I think at this point we know what are the things that work. So I will say enjoy your holidays, be with family, do it in a safe way. And obviously the reminder of you know vaccines have really demonstrated that they decrease uh, the risk of transmission and especially boosters now have demonstrated that they decrease the risk associated with the Omicron variant. Uh, so that will be my message. You know, while we're talking about this, I probably should have said this earlier. You mentioned masking and social distancing. We are social distance. The reason we don't have the mask on right now is because we're social distance, but we do have them close by and I can assure you they will be back on as soon as we're done with this. Uh, we have another media question for you, Dr. Herrera. Noah Hertz from the West Volusia Beacon asks, how long does current research suggest it takes for the efficacy of the first two vaccine doses to wane? So, you know, I think six months is that mark that we think about. That's why the recommendation to get a booster is six months after your second dose. Uh, so that's the number that in studies we've seen that before we were giving boosters, we, we started to notice that after, the, after six months, the breakthrough infections uh, were started to increase, and that's where that number really came from. Nadine from News 6 asks, a lot of people have held out on getting their boosters thinking they might not need it yet. This is just what we were talking about. What message can you send to that segment of the population? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, definitely boosters are part of getting vaccinated. Um, I think that initially um, we believe that it was sort of a bonus. It was sort of like, well, you already have your vaccine and if you want some extra protection, just get your booster. Uh, we are convinced now that it's really part of your vaccination. And, and I suspect that the definition of fully vaccinated may change soon to say that you need also your booster to be considered fully vaccinated. Um, that has to do again with the waning of the immunity. So the recommendation is go get your booster. I think that if you already made the decision that you wanted to get the vaccine by getting the first one and the second one, it's just an easy extra step to then just go and get uh, your third dose. And it's definitely the right thing to do for you uh, and for the community. So I have a question from Nikki Ross from Daytona Beach News Journal who asked, do you anticipate there will still be a war on masks and vaccinations in the coming year? So I think that uh, there, there is gonna be I think as we go into 2022, especially with this new variant, the need uh, to, to continue to use masks. And you know, some of these uh, recommendations may, may change. Um, but with the Omicron variant uh, around, I think we're gonna be seeing that we're gonna be going back to some, some uh, more use of masks. And definitely the message around vaccinations will continue. Abe Abariah from WMFE again with another question. Who, Abe asks, what are you doing differently, Dr. Herrera, in your personal life because of the Omicron variant? And do you have any changes in your plans for the holiday? So I will think that what we are doing different is really our message around the boosters. Um, again, I think that we were leaving it more as an, as an option. And then now we're seeing, sending a very strong message of boosters are needed. Um, actually, when we think about our workforce, and we were thinking earlier about how are we preparing for, for a potential surge, that we hope it doesn't happen, but how are we preparing? The boosters, um, giving it to our workforce, is something that now we're thinking about as to make it a lot easier for them to get it. So we used to have um, 
you know, we'll, we'll continue to do vaccines and we do them through our employee health clinic. But just today in our main campus, we open up walking booster clinic and we are telling all our workforce, come get your booster. So that's something that I, that, that we are doing different. And you know, on a personal level is the, the, the same thing that I shared earlier. Uh, I think that we need to continue to leave. I think the holidays are coming. It's important for the community to embrace the holidays with family, and there is a safe way to do it. So what I'm planning to do is, is to embrace them, but in a safe way. All right, Dr. Herrera, Herrera, always a pleasure to have you here. We really do appreciate it. Thank and you. thanks to all of you for joining us. Until next time, stay healthy and feel whole.